Taylor and Deacon, thank you so much for joining us today as we share some exciting news about the only planned U.S. presentation of St. Anthony of Padua um, relic. And again, we appreciate you guys taking the time. Father, tell us a little bit about St. Anthony of Padua. First of all, uh, thank you so much for mm -hmm. having us this morning. Uh, St. Anthony is a man. He is a monk, Franciscan. He is a priest. He is a preacher. He is a doctor. He is the man who loves so much the poor. He's mm. the patron of the poor. And he is a man who brought hope to the people at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Anthony, as we know, he's as a saint of lost things. And today the world, you know, many people that are lost in this world mm -hmm. who are searching for something. And this is who is St. Anthony who can tell us who is the Lord and who we are and what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. That's quite an honor to have the uh, relic actually coming to your parish. Could you talk about how that all developed? How did it all come about? Um, there is three reasons. Uh, the first reason, um, around uh, 1906, a priest came together, the Maronite community, Catholic from Lebanon. And when he came to Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, he was in a mission. And they were planning to build a community, a church under the name of St. Peter and Paul. Somehow the priest, after a couple months, he got very ill and he was close to die. So the parishioners, they have a novena to St. Anthony and he survived, he lived. So they changed the name of the missions and they turned it to St. Anthony of Padova. Mm -hmm. The second reason is uh, not long time ago, two years ago, when the tornado hit uh, Springfield, mm. and where is the church is located, many homes were destroyed, badly damaged, and the tornado go around the church, wow. and nothing happened to the church. And the third reason, it's a personal. A couple years ago, as a priest, I had to face uh, a challenge in my priestly life when it comes to accept uh, an assignment. And since I study in Rome and I go to Italy very often, I went to St. Anthony to Padova and I prayed to St. Anthony to remove this cup, if you, <laughs> if you could understand what I'm talking yes. about. But I ha was no idea that I'm gonna be assigned someday to St. Anthony of Padova. Mm. And when I came to Springfield, I knew right away that St. Anthony, he wants me to do to accomplish something to him. Uh, as you know, as a people, it's easy to forget. And the reason we have the relic of St. Anthony is to remind our people what our ancestors, they're no longer with us, why their parents, grandfather, grandmother, why they have chosen the name of St. Anthony to remind them that there is a miracle, there it's a purpose, there's, it's a reason. And after so many years, maybe the people, they don't realize how is St. Anthony, who is he? Especially at this moment where we're going through today, when you turn on the TV, when you read a newspaper, always breaking the news, 90% is bad news. So this is the time to tell our community, all the people surrounding in New England and Springfield, who is St. Anthony, and to take refuge, and he will be able to answer all these questions. Great. Well, Deacon, this is a, a big honor. Uh, it's very unique. Tell us about this honor, and what was the parish's reaction to all of this? Well, the honor comes from the fact that uh, when the relic comes to the United States, brought in from Padua, it usually stays one day in each city or town. Uh, Father Zena was able to uh, convince how he did it, I don't know, but he was able <laughs> to convince the rector in Padua of the Pontifical Basilica that it should stay with us for nine days. 
So instead of the relic moving, we have everybody coming to the relic at St. Anthony's. And we have been able to put together a rather uh, beautiful schedule for the nine days. The parishioners were ecstatic. Mm -hmm. If it came for one day, they would have been very ecstatic. But being that it's there for nine days, we have the in as many surrounding communities as far as New York State, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, all of us will be attending. And we've done it in various celebrations for each day. A celebration for the uh, Portuguese community, a celebration for the Italian community, the Polish community, mm -hmm. the Vietnamese community. Uh, anybody can come any day, but there are special events that these communities and heritages will bring on those particular days. So the parish is really looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. and. To pray to St. Anthony. <laughs> Who knows what they want <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> and I know Bishop McDonald is very excited too and he sent out um, a letter to encourage people to come and I, I talk about too the other the social media aspect too. I know you have a Facebook page, you have a website to let people know s exactly specifically what is going on for those nine days. Right, we do. We have that at St. Anthony's. You, you, I'm sure will post yeah. St. Anthony's relic dot com and uh, it will have the schedule for the nine days and, and father st. Anthony's feast day is it's a week away uh, what can people learn um, from this wonderful saint what they can learn from st. Anthony at the Saints as you know today uh, the technology for the last uh, couple of years is go so fast Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, network, uh, iPad, iPhone, <laughs> whatever. And the more, unfortunately, we have this development and technology, the more the people keep a distance away from God. Mm -hmm. Because we consider each one of us today, the whole world becomes so closer, but at the same time as individual, everyone his own world, his own universe. St. Anthony, his feast day, it reminds us who we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. St. Anthony, as I said before, we are our lost. I repeat my words, what I said today. Today, many people, they're searching. Anything goes on the internet. Anything go breaking the news. We believe it. We run right away, searching on the internet. We try everything except the words of God. And you understand St. Anthony, he was good a preacher at the time. Yeah. And the people, the history repeats itself. They don't want to listen to St. Anthony. As you know, when they St. Anthony, he went to the, to the shore. And the fish came out listening to his sermon. So he is good a preacher. And this is what his body, his bones is decayed. But his tongue, where the words of God came from his mouth, as uncorrupted. And this is what is about the Feast of St. Anthony, that all of us who are poor in the front of God, beside he is the saints of the poor. Mm -hmm. And St. Anthony reminds us today uh, to remind the words of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. He urged bishop, a priest, get out. Mm -hmm. Go bring the people back to the church. And this is what is the Feast of St. Anthony. It's a message to all of us to go back to God, to Creator, to Eucharist. And you have, as you had said, Deacon, you have people from everywhere coming in. How do you handle an event that is, is going to be big? It's been a long, tedious plan. <laughs> Started in September of 2013. Uh, if, you look, if you look at the schedule that we have right now, every day is full. We start at 6.30 in the morning to open the church and probably end after three masses and various uh, events throughout the day at around maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock. We have a youth day. So it, it has been a, a tedious experience. However, um, I have had the distinct pleasure and honor to learn how to plan things like this. In my other life, I was a surgeon. So uh, I then, retired and when I retired God said you're not retired you have to mm -hmm. go back to school so I became a deacon in that uh, time of my medical career I did a work for the Mercy Hospital in Springfield and there I was vice president of medical affairs had many many 
departments and every so I'm used to this it's not a tedious uh, event it's a lot of work mm -hmm. it's a lot of work a lot of contacts but it's all coming right to the end by July 1st we'll have the final schedule well, we only have a, a couple minutes left father for you, you you mentioned it a little bit how this is tied into a little bit of your past it must be wonderful as a priest to see so many people who are going to come to see this relic and who are coming to share their faith. It must be a wonderful experience for you as a man filled with faith. Uh, yes, and here I would like to take this opportunity again to everyone who are listening to us right now to extend a warm invitation and to anyone who could come because as you notice on the flyers, we have the posters. If you seek miracles, and St. Anthony is the saints of miracle, just trust in him and have faith in him. And he's the one, the only saints besides St. Joseph, who hold the baby Jesus on his arm, it's St. Anthony. Remember, miracles, it's happened when we hold the same baby in the Eucharist when we receive him. If we come to seek him, we don't have to be perfect. I repeat the words of Holy Father, Pope Francis, the Pope whom the people, they loved him, Catholic or not Catholic, so much. He said, we don't have to be perfect. The church is not for the holy people. I don't have to be perfect and holy man to go in front of St. Anthony's. Mm -hmm. He knows my problem. I just go in front of him, talk to him and trust in him. And believe me, miracles would happen. Well, Deacon Father, thank you so much for being with us today, and we'd like to thank you for being with us also on This Is The Day, and remember the prayer box, and remember the Holy Father who is going to be praying for peace this weekend, so remember that, and know that all of you, every single one of you, are in our thoughts and in our prayers. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, and thank you for watching This Is The Day.